Hello and welcome to Kismet Rising. So we're doing the monthly oracle card guidance for July and I'm using the Heart of the Fairy Oracle. Go ahead and choose either number one, two or three and you can go directly to your reading. So for those of you who've chosen option number one, we are asking what is your monthly oracle card guidance for the month of July 2024? Okay, so for those of you who've chosen the option number one, we asking, what do we need to know about July 2024? So the first card that comes up was the Queen of the Golden Bowl. So we have here in the first week of July a time for you to be able to truly go within, um, not necessarily in deep reflection, but there will be times in your week, which may have begun already, in which you'll be able to identify what types of behavior and reactions and emotions that, that you've had in the past um, that will no longer serve you as you go ahead in the future. So where it is that change needs to happen and how is it that it's going to happen? And it's a very gentle process. It's um, a time of great abundance in that you are able to access soul healing from deep within yourself where you know what your contribution is to the given situation and how that needs to be adjusted so that you may grow from it and everyone including yourself may benefit from that situation. So the first week of July and I feel like you would have been in this energy already as you come into July is very much about being able to recognize where it is that you have contributed to something where it is that you may be at fault because of something or maybe it's got nothing to do with blame but perhaps it has to do with how is it that you can better respond to a given situation so that it is beneficial and regenerative for you all and that's what we have in the first week of July in the second week of July, we have the Queen of the week of the Hearth and Home, and this month I've chosen one card for each week, because July is quite a long month, and oh, it feels like quite a lot a long month, and it also feels like there's quite a lot going on in this month. So, Hearth and Home. So this card comes in your life when you are actually feeling the need to nest when you're feeling the need um, of the of nurturing. You need, you need to actually, when you feel the need to be nurtured, to be looked after, um, to have a place which you can call home. And this card is, is challenging you to actually find a way to feel at home at this moment and also find a way to be at home uh, wherever you may be. So you may be in the space of another or you may invite someone to your home and may not feel like your home any longer because you've invited um, this guest over and the energy shifts. And this is to say, reach out and find your home within yourself. And what is it that belongs to you that you, you take with you when you go out, when you're out on the road, when you're at home, when you are in another person's home? What of that can be home? But I also feel here for some of you, you may be searching for a home. It may be that in this week you will be looking for a home or you'll be looking for something of the past in the future. So you might be looking for some kind of nurturing, some kind of hearth, some kind of a home where you feel like you can actually put down your roots 
and feel like you belong. And the advice for this is to keep an open mind and go out and search for what it is that you need. You may have had a nesting instinct a very long time ago, but may have not acted on it. And now is the time to go ahead and do that. For the third week of July, the number 47, the big behind, um, is a card that basically asks you to look at where you're at right now and what are your options. Uh, how is it that you can maintain or integrate joy in your life and how how is it that you're going to be able to find your way to that regardless of what stands before you, um, even when it looks like there's no path to where you need to go to. It's also about weighing down your weighing your options, sorry, not weighing down, but rather weighing your options and seeing what actual options you do have because you might actually want something, but you might not be able to know how you can go about getting it. And this card tells you that there is a way, there is a means, and you just need to look at it anew and from a fresh perspective and you will be able to find what you're looking for. And there might be just a different path to getting what it is that you desire. So as we come into week four, we have the card number nine and we have the queen of laughter. And I can't help but notice that the month of July for you is very much dominated by the queens. Um, and it's really very much about you seeking what is best for you and how it is that you can elevate yourself and be the best version of yourself. Um, the Queen of Laughter talks about you being able to find joy, unbridled joy in whatever your situation is. And in the in the week three, you have the big behind where it's about, it's like the joy is teasing you. But in the week four, you found the joy. You're actually enjoying yourself. You are experiencing the laughter, the freedom, the lightness of being. And it's quite a healing force. So you may have begun the month with the queen of the golden bow where you're actually thinking, oh, well, this is the path that I need to take in order to be okay and in order to heal. And by the time you come to the end of the month, you've actually actioned it. And it may be a bit daunting at the beginning. Perhaps there's something that you need to do before the end of the month of July. And it's feeling daunting. It feels like you're not sure if you could do it or if it's not really the right fit for you. But by the time you come to the end of July, you will be having such a lot of fun and you would have found a way to be able to adapt to the situation that you have as is. Uh, and, and what you've done in the second week of um, July would have helped you to be able to do that. And coming to terms to, with it all in the third week of July, rather than facing um, despair or feeling daunted, rather than soaking yourself with those emotions you tran um you transition into week four where you're actually feeling much lighter and the questions that have plagued you in the earlier part of july um are no longer important it seems that you may have the answers and even if you don't it's no longer important okay so i'm wishing you a fabulous july 2024 i hope it works out really well and that you do, in fact, uh, find the home that you're looking for, as well as find the laughter and the joy that you may have left behind in the past and have the wisdom here to be able to uh, access that or give yourself the permission to be able to access it and be able to have the strength and courage to come through things also when it's not as clear um, just by feeling where it is that you need to go to. All right, wishing you all a very blessed time and blessings abound from Kismet Rising. And so for those of you who've chosen option number two, you're asking, what can we expect in the month of July 2024?
So for those of you who've chosen the option number two, the first card we have for the first week of July is the pen. And this tells me that what you need to do is just um, go out and enjoy yourself. Just be able to embrace the energy that's available and go ahead and immerse yourself in it. Also, it tells me that you can leave caution to the wind, that it's going to be okay to have the faith that Pan has and knowing that it will all work out fine and to be able to tap into that bravery and that courage and that carefree nature that that he has. So the first week of July is very much a time where you can actually enjoy yourself, have a party, go out, enjoy whatever, do whatever you want to do. It's actually going to work out well. It's not the time to go inside of yourself. It's not the time to be introverted. It's not the time to actually um, fold up inside of yourself or become pensive or reclusive. Rather, it's a time to get out and tap into all that energy that's there and to be able to harness it and use it for yourself. I want to say also that if things are not working out very well, if it's not really the time for you to have fun, just be and have faith in uh, be in faith and have faith in what is happening right now. It's all working out for the best and it really is working in, fa in favor of you especially um, as well as another who may be concerned. Okay, As you come into the second week of July, we have the Speak of the Truth and that's a fantastic card to have because it's basically asking you to uh, to just ask whatever question you have in your mind just ask for clarity, ask for truth. If there's something that you need to know, but you don't have the answer to it, if there's something that has been bugging you for a while and you need to have an answer to it, um, ask the speak of truth to be able to show you the truth. It's also showing me that after this first week of July, that you actually have the energy and the strength and the courage to be able to Open yourself up to hear the truth and to be able to face it head on. Uh, and it's not being sugar-coated or anything like that. You just are able to take in what is being sent to you. So as we move on to the week three, you have another card here, which is card of help. So both these cards here are about help. Um, you can ask the speak of truth for help. You can ask the sorcerer for help. And you can ask the sorcerer, what it is that you need to know if you have a particular question. On the other hand, the sorcery energy is very much about not acting, um, not putting yourself forward and acting like you would here in the pan, but rather to stay silent within yourself and only act if necessary. It might be a time to be able to go inward and think about what your next steps are going to be rather than take action. It could also be a time where you find out that somebody um, has been thinking about you or has been has had you in their heart, but they haven't actually said or done anything about it for quite some time and you suddenly hear of that news. Um, it might be here that you are thinking about that person and uh, this is not a love reading, but this is also coming up for some of you that you know, you've been asking, well, please show me, does he actually have feelings or does she have feelings or does it have feelings for me? Or do they have feelings for me, rather? And um, and here you have the answer because something happens, something quite hap it happens quite suddenly. Um, it might be that this person has been waiting for a long time for the right moment to be able to come forth. It might be that you're waiting for the right moment to be able to tell the truth about something and you have that chance in the third week of July. Um, these cards here are are coming together and bringing quite a lot of clarity and answering all the questions that you have so that you can actually be in peace and you can actually move forth. And But you have to be prepared for the consequences of what this means and what it means to be to tell the truth or to ask for these this information. Okay, so as you come to the end of July, it's a card which is the Lady of Sorrows and it's very much about being able to forgive. It's very much about being able to let go 
of the hurt that you might have been holding on to for some time, which might have served a purpose. So this is not to diminish in any way the pain that was caused that you might, for which you may be holding on to the hurt, but rather to understand that it's okay at some moment to be able to let go of that, especially if it's creating a defense for you that you no longer need to have. Perhaps it's okay to let go of whatever's been hurting you, whatever you've identified with for a very long time, so that you can let more space and more experience and more light come into your life. And so the last week of July is very much about being able to let go of aspects of yourself um, that you may have barricaded yourself in, in with. Who is it and, and what is it that you are that you've forgotten because you've created a fortress around you and you haven't been able to let go of that because it's been your protection? And I think that the month of July, these cards are quite cohesive in, in that it's very much about being letting, you know, going to joy, letting caution go to the wind. And then here, it's like getting the answers that you're looking for, but maybe you're not actually ready to hear some of these answers, or maybe it's a bit too much. And then being able to process that requires you to forgive. It requires you to move on. It requires you to change, to be able to accommodate all of these questions and answers that come up here. So that is my reading for you for the month of July 2024. I wish that you have a wonderful month. May you have many wonderful experiences and many, many blessings. Blessings abound from Kismet Rising. And for those of you who've chosen the option number three, we are asking, what do we need to know in the month of July 2024? Okay, so the first card you have, for those of you who've chosen the option number three, is the Green Woman. And that represents the week of, the first week of July. So this week I've decided to take four cards uh, for each week of July, rather than just three cards for the entire energy of July. The Green Woman represents um, lusciousness, fruition, uh, delicateness, a delicateness. Um, a yin energy, a feminine energy that asks you to be subtle and delicate in the way in which you uh, go about doing something. So perhaps you have an idea or you have some very strong convictions, but not to act on it in a manner that is outward, but rather to wait and to receive. And when you do receive, to project, to actually state, you know, what's on your mind, to be able to be clear about your convictions. It's an energy of, of strength and power and um, just energy that is very contained, but very powerful at the same time. So how is it that you can allow yourself to let this powerful and gentle energy nurture you and nurture those around you? And that's very much the question for the first week of July for you. This could also be the case in a relationship. And as you go into the week number two, you have the number two, the Queen of Bedlam. It's very much about how it is that you're going to operate or manage yourself within a particular relationship. Um, how it is that you manage to maintain sane, your san sorry, maintain your sanity as well as um, manage your frustration within a relationship 
that might be uh, threatening your peace and calm. So the second week of July is very much about you managing day-to-day things. Are you eating enough? Are you eating healthily? Are you getting enough exercise? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you managing to clean up and take care of your laundry and um, just, you know, look after yourself and, you know, do your own ablutions as well as shower, etc. Just like looking after you. How is it that you're going to actually look after you and I think that uh, for some of us sometimes those things come into focus for us more than at other times and the question is how are you going to use this energy here of the strength this deep strength and this deep knowing to manage the responsibilities that you have um, that become quite Uh, come more into focus for you in the second week of July. Rather than allowing yourself to be um, overwhelmed with it or become frustrated um, or blame others for things that are not actually working necessarily in your favor. It's also about being able to overcome any kind of neurosis that you have and just be having that in focus so that you can move beyond that and just put that behind you or know what it is that you need to do in order to manage that. So as we move into the week three of July, what you find is that you actually are able to feel that joy that you might have found elusive in the second week or you might have struggled to have, but it comes comes to you with quite a lot of ease so you have found a way to feel happy to feel at one with yourself to be able to spread that joy to be able to feel and spread that joy and actually what this does is it elevates you from a spiritual point of view and you're just able to um, make much more advances in your own spirituality Um, it takes you away from the day-to-day and takes you more into the ethereal, but through the passageway of joy. And I think that things just become a lot easier and a lot lighter for you in the third week of July, for those of you who've chosen this option. And it's largely because of the manner in which you managed the second week. And it's also because of the emotions or the, the... the qualities that you've cultivated within yourself in the first week of July. As you come into the last week of July, there's a feeling of heartbreak or a feeling of abandonment, a feeling of aloneness. And the card actually looks at how it is that you can find love in yourself and how it is that you can um, manage the way in which you love and how it is that you recognize love in your life. It may be that either you or someone in your life is not as compassionate as they could be or not as um, not really able to see what the other person needs and is not able to give them that. Maybe you are doing that. Maybe somebody else is doing that. But the question is at the end of July is how do you overcome that? Now, I feel that at the end of July, you might be um, facing some kind of old memories or you might be actually um, picking up on an energy that belonged to the past, um, like something about 16 years ago or 17 years ago. Or for some of you, it could be like six or seven years ago. I'm not really sure. Obviously, it'll apply to all of you quite differently. Um, so it's some energy from the past which is coming up again for you and it's like you need to like heal that and let go and a lot of what is needed in that last week of July is um, and I feel it can be the third week of July as well it could be like between like the 21st to the 28th or so something like this Uh, there is this energy of having to let go of something that was once yours but in order to do that you find something of yourself that has been eluding you 
and you're very happy to have recognized and to have received that aspect of yourself again. It might be that you go to a particular place where you kind of retrieve a soul aspect of yourself which you've left behind or it may be that you simply come across a person who reminds you of an aspect of yourself you may have left behind but it's actually really quite enlightening and quite beautiful it may be also that you're experiencing some kind of loss maybe somebody hasn't actually um, come to you in the way in which they wanted to come to you or maybe somebody has left your life and you're experiencing some sorrow and some loss but regardless, you have the strength within you and you have this joy. And all of this is enough to be able to keep you buoyant as you come out of July into August, but with some very important lessons of compassion and joy and being able to nurture yourself and give yourself what it is that you need and, and forgiveness to a large extent. Okay, so I hope that's been helpful and I wish you all a very beautiful July 2024. May you have lo a lovely time. For those of you who have holidays, may you enjoy that. And um, many, many blessings to you all. Blessings abound from Kismet Rising.